uh, fixtures then with that i will help you uh, what you know how the project get initiated for example uh, you have assigned to a project you join with you so let's say the infosys or uh, accenture they onboarded you uh, onboarded to their company and then they assigned you to a specific project let's say retail project and in that case you know um, so they so see they, they already initialized they, they initiated this project okay uh, let's assume that the project name is wellmart okay wellmart retail analytics so what is uh, wellmart so before that you know let's say you work as a lead data analyst for this uh, retail chain you have been tasked with building out a new power bi reporting solution that should enable the exploratory analysis for other stakeholders like a uh, finance uh, manager vp finance vp sales and even sales manager marketing manager it should uh, enable uh, in the exploratory analysis for these uh, you know various users within your company once the report has been built you need to publish that reports and distribute uh, it uh, you know using the power bi cloud service the the current project you can tell them the current project the reports and data sets used by various reporting users were available in their local system their local laptop and it was not shareable on cloud there is a you know there is a what is the impact of this there is a risk of conflict of interest because every user can see any other users data this is not acceptable there is a conflict of interest i cannot you are not supposed to see my data and i i know i am not supposed to see your data there is a conflict of interest it is not the right way of doing it okay i'll just explain you the current um, customer uh, you know about for my current project i'll just give you a quick brief about my current customer so the current customer is walmart they are the large uh, fixtures uh, sorry don't say fixtures yes okay they are the large global retail chain located in usa or uk and they have close to 1600 plus uh, stores um, spread it across the globe this um, retail chain uh, they kicked off an initiative to build an automated scalable interactive robust integrated analytics environment the current system was not scalable maybe right already they have built the reporting environment but it, it was not scalable what do you mean by scalable even if more number of users uh, try to access the reports and if they view the report it should be faster just because the number of users increases the performance should not go down that is what scalability and interactive the reports should be more interactive you know most of the reports were very static reports in you need to explain this way uh, and then robust okay and integrated analytics so everything should integrated currently the reports were developed and they you know they the the different uh, users or different uh, you know the report developers currently they keep the report in their local system but at an org level they wanted to get a unified view for example north region itself multiple stores are there and each store works autonomously there is no proper uh, coordination if they work as an island Uh, there is no proper coordination you know they each of them they use their own naming convention okay and apart from this they store the whatever the data they develop it they will share it uh, through email and they keep it in their laptop if something goes wrong if their laptop crashes gone and again um, entire north region if you want to see the overall north region sales performance now all the regions put together what is the total sales perform business performance they are not able to get the data it's a it was a biggest challenge posed by the organization the data were available in islands this is one of the challenges remember it so what did they want to bring in all the data and put it in a common centralized data warehouse okay and uh, so once all the data of your organization available in enterprise data warehouse that's they call it as enterprise data warehouse in a centralized location all the users can access it and then they can query the data and also they can if you ask any question can you give me the uh, total sales performance in both um, north and south region yes you can give it because the data are available centrally and all the regions put together what is the 
sales performance or business performance. Yes, you can do it because all the data are available in one place. Okay, so that is what the integrated unified analytics environment. They wanted to build this one. That is the reason why they gave the project to us. Otherwise, see, they have some pain points. They would, they are, they are posing a lot of challenges. Uh, they are not able to generate the report on time. And even if they generate the report, what will happen is uh, a lot of issues are errors are there, bugs are there, errors are there. It is not accurate. Because of these issues, they are not able to make the right decision at the right time. Making the right decision at the right time is key to the success of the organization. They are not able to make, make the, the right decision at the right time because of these issues. And also too many manual efforts or redundant efforts are there. So what happens, you know, since there is there no proper coordination, uh, whatever the report uh, one guy generated, the same report is developed by the other guy. But when you compare these two reports, so first of all, these two are redundant tasks. Why, if I ask you to create one report, uh, and if I ask another guy to create another report, it makes sense. Both the guys, if they generate the same report, it's a waste of time. Right? We want to cut the time. We want to save the time. Saving the time is nothing but saving the cost. And at the same time, when I compare both the reports, though both the reports show the same uh, data or the same uh, status, but uh, there are some kind of inconsistency. As a manager, a VP, right, we are breaking our head. So we are grappling with uh, the inner crisis. Okay, and other problem is at present the customers, uh, they've been having, uh, they've been using a gamut of technology and it takes a lot of time and effort for them to deliver insights about the business performance to various stakeholders within this stipulated amount of time. And the manual task leads to data inconsistency, errors in uh, reports and duplication of efforts. Okay, at present the reports and data sets used by Various reporting users available in the local system. We need to tell this one. And it is not shareable on cloud. There is a significant vulnerability to security threats. So to overcome these challenges, pain points, they initiated this project. So as part of this project, what uh, they did as part of the requirements phase, you know, SDLC life cycle, software development life cycle. So you, waterfall is a very older methodology. Now, Agile gained a lot of popularity, Agile methodology, but again, iterative incremental model, iterative incremental model they will be using. This is the methodology they use it, incremental methodology. It's not a waterfall. It's not like, you know, once the requirement phase, the requirement phase is over, you freeze it and then proceed with the design phase, high level design or design phase. Design phase. Once the design is you know fr frozen, next you move to the move to the cut phase, coding and unit testing. Once this has been done, go to the UAT or QA and UAT. But here, what happens? Requirement, uh, you know, it's not initially we are not uh, you know, aware of the complete picture. So what they will start building the reports, and again they will iterate it. Again they'll go back. Hey, they'll get the feedback. Is that correct? Or you need to include anything else? Yes, yes. We need to uh, you know add some other reports. Okay, so it is iterative incremental model. They do it phase by phase. Okay, the single project itself, they, they divide into multiple phases, phase one and phase two. In phase one, they use the iterative incremental model. Whatever the lessons they learn it, the same they use in phase two. For example, in phase one, we spend a lot of time in getting the approval from the appropriate stakeholder. You created the, you, you got all the, you gathered all the requirements. You need to document it and then share it with your cousin, your respective stakeholders. They took longer time to uh, approve it. Only when they approved, you can proceed with the second, the subsequent phase. Okay. So what they do is these are the lessons. Apart from the data quality issues, all these issues you posed it. So what you did, um, the what are the lessons you learned as part of phase one? You implement phase two. Okay. So in the phase right before uh, they start the phase two, what they do is make sure that they identify all the sponsors uh, are available uh, right and then spark uh, sparks are nothing but um, single point of contact for each applications system or something like that so th thereby the sign of time we reduced it now the data call even data governance team they set up they set it up 
and all the right so and then what happened um, the what are the lessons we learned in phase 1 and phase 2 we were able to follow it okay so the next question is have you involved in which phases of the software development life cycle that you involved i know you can better tell them you involved in coding and unit testing okay they will give you the you they will give you the mock uh, design of the report and also they'll give you the source to target document and then they have some high level design document even the high level design document was not so not proper but uh, they mention uh, what logic needs to be mentioned um, in that document based on which what we do is uh, we will create the reports and then we we conduct the unit test uh, we, whatever the report developed by you you are the author for this and you are supposed to do the unit testing you need to do both uh, black box and white box testing you need to check how optimally you have written the logic or everything is good and that is what your white box testing you need to go and check you know you have uh, for example you use a custom function uh, is uh, did you follow any modularity in it have you used uh, uh, the many uh, reusabilities all the things you need to check it as per unit testing apart from this you need to check from the functionality point of view is this formula correctly working with the different filtering criteria okay you need to check it out so everything uh, you need to identify any bugs in your code and you need to fix it okay self review and the next one is the qa the testing team they will pick up your code once you tell them yes we are done unit testing uh, we created uh, so many test cases these are the test cases we created and then the results also we have updated in that uh, test document and what they do they will open and see and then what if you from their side they will use their own data to test your report developed by you right so they will test it in case of any defects they will raise it in the defect logging system the defect log well, you know once they raise it you will get notified you go and check uh, which reports uh, you know you are the author for it and uh, uh, you know whatever the 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 defects or they found it you need to fix it sometimes you can talk to them this is not a defect you know there is some format issue something like that okay if the problem is uh, whatever the defect they identified it is not necessarily you have to accept with them you can also go and tell them so this is not a defect okay this is some data issue something like that just give me a second somebody okay and these are the phases you can tell them you involved in cut phase and um, once we are done with the coding and unit testing uh, we will inform our manager will inform it to the testing team the testing team what they do is they will push our code to their respective folder they will ask you um, what is the release management plan or deployment have you involved in any deployment you can tell them unfortunately i did not get an opportunity to work on the deployment but uh, we have dev folder the whatever the script uh, whatever the report that we do that will be available here including data set and then we have qa folder that is for creative we don't have access to that once we complete all the unit testing thing we will communicate to them they will freeze our code and then they will migrate our code to their environment in their folder they will do the testing every in case of any defects in our code from the functionality point of view they will raise it in the defect tracking we will go and close it after addressing those issues we will close it next one is the uit user acceptance testing the end users will test our report if they find anything problem right so they will get back to us and uh, in case they need anything uh, additional they will inform it us that point in time so in that in that kind of we raise a change request if any additional requirement during the uit testing they found they need additional thing that is called change request and finally once we complete everything and the, the uat test is you know successful then it will be pushed to the production system once the code is product to, you know every report get pushed to production later in point in time if we need to make any change the uh, the production report we need to bring that report back to our dev folder but the deployment is done by release management team Uh, they are the one uh, responsible for this but however during the uh, my code migration this also called as a code migration uh, we og- offer support from the offshore in case they face any issues we will offer them the support okay so far we did not face any issues any major issues the release management team they takes care of everything they are all experienced people they will takes care of um, the deployment activities from offshore we support them that's all okay these are the reporting and uh, dashboard requirements so we had 
uh, our business analyst you need to tell the business analyst at on site uh, from our company right so they conducted various workshops with uh, different stakeholders including ceo uh, and all the top guys and also marketing and sales managers and finance manager inventory manager and then they captured the requirement so like um, the c1 vp says they are very particular about these reports fiscal year quarter month region wise top 10 customers by category and state and um, yeah and uh, the this one the profit margin they want to see and then uh, year on year percentage change in total profit likewise you can tell okay so year over year sales comparison year over year percentage change in total profit likewise you can tell them so they'll ask you in the interview what are the kpis uh, that you have created it that we'll see it later so these are kind of a kpi right so year over year uh, and um, Mm, quarter to uh, fiscal year quarter month sales right all these things and then contributes countries contribute to the most to our profits and sales these are the reporting requirements from the senior level top level upper management and then the middle management they need which we did the majority customer purchase who are my valuable customers in terms of product okay these are the reporting and dashboard uh, requirements and finance manager they are very particular with the profit and loss balance sheet cash flow you need to remember all the things, okay? An inventory manager, they wants to view the below KPIs and reports. Fiscal year-to-date waste, year-to-date production, average production lead time, fiscal year-to-date production hours, okay? And the next one is pricing manager. He wants to see the unit price, band, you know, band, total sales. Should be able to do scenario analysis, okay? And next one is the non-functional requirements, the security, right? Security and other requirements. These are called your non-functional requirements. These are functional. So far, we discussed functional requirements. These are called non-functional requirements. Here, uh, it takes care of the performance issues and also any security related. User access is currently controlled via static orders. You know, it should be made it as a dynamic role level security. Each manager is responsible for, they've given. So which manager should have, uh, should, should be given what role to access the data? And sales data also contains column for shipping date, discount rate, and marketing rules should be able to view the respective individual sales performance, implement dynamic role level security. So these are the things, okay? Create a mobile phone for the above, mobile view, mobile phone view, okay? So that's all. These are the requirements, functional requirements, non-functional requirements. Uh, they captured the functional requirements across various department or line of business, and also the non-functional requirements. So they, you know, they, they, they you know, the uh, documented it. So once uh, I got inducted into a project, uh, I got an opportunity to go through the requirements at an eye level. The detail level, what I did, uh, there are some documents were available. An Excel document, the Excel document we started going through. We have something called source to target document. Source to target document, the Excel sheet. So for example, uh, you want to compute the um, uh, profit margin. So profit margin. How do you count? There is some formula for this. For you know, in order to apply this formula, what are the you know columns that are required? Okay, so gross uh, sales, something like that. Right? So gross sales, uh, you know, where you can there is a separate column for this where the source you know data comes for the sales, right? So quantity into price. These are the source for the gross. Sales. You just think that way, okay? And quantity where it comes, it comes from the source system OLTP. The quantity, price, everything comes from source system. And from source to target, right? So they will mention everything. So for this column, you know, from which table in the source system, well to be system, the, the data column is come, we took it. And this column, price column, we took it from which table from the source system. And then how did we arrive the gross sales? How did we arrive the cost of goods sold? How did you formulas, they will check it. So the source to target it gives you the end-to-end -end picture from the oil table to till you are reporting. Okay, so what are the formulas that you use it. For those formulas, what are the columns that you use it? Those columns come from which table, in which source system, everything will be documented here. Okay. And uh, these are the data sets that are available. I will share you uh, the link. I think um, I need to recheck. I will check and I will share these data set. And what you do is you just go ahead and create the dashboard and uh, create the reports for these things. Okay. 
the interview they'll ask you uh, questions like um, you know can you tell me a couple of um, kpis that you created it so what are the kpis that you say for example you know we have something called executive dashboard executive uh, management dashboard so what what so what kind of uh, metrics that you use it here so here uh, we have used something like profit margin And then uh, the average order quantity. And then like um, year on year, percentage change in total profit. Again, quarter on quarter, okay, uh, total profit. And then uh, top five products by sales, by profit, by quantity. Top five products by sales quantity and profit and then um, they want to see something like uh, you know how these profit quantity and total revenues are distributed uh, geographically they want to see the distribution also so which uh, geography contributed uh, towards the to, to more profit and more sales and all those things right they want to see Okay, you can tell them, uh, you know, with this, um, uh, you know, so with this, the executive dashboard, they, they can they could explore the company wide data for decision making. For that purpose, uh, we have developed the executive dashboard, and uh, in this executive dashboard, it allows the uh, management to view their business from uh, you know, different uh, aspects based on their attributes like a products year, country, order type, and so on, okay? And uh, this dashboard, uh, we have used the line charts, uh, donut charts, custom usual for analysis. And also, you know, uh, we have, um, we kept the slices or the filters to tell stories about the business elements, like um, profit, quantity, revenue uh, across the region, right? So, the, so with this uh, metrics and the reports, the management can gain insight uh, into all these important metrics okay and each department manager they have their own uh, they want us to create a department specific dashboards also like uh, uh, inventory manager right? they wanted to so you can the, the metrics or the kpis vary from one department to another department there will be some kind of overlap but uh, in general, right, uh, they'll be um, they'll be different. Okay, see the marketing guy and sales manager they are very particular about uh, this thing. Display the running total sales last thirty days. How much did we sell during the week and on weekends? Who are my most valuable customers in terms of product? Okay, and customer loyalty program something like they will check it out. Okay, customer lifetime value they will predict everything. Which weekday did the majority of customers purchase? So that they will decide. Uh, they come up with uh, some kind of pricing strategy to woo the customers to you know buy more. Okay, if you talk this much, this is enough. Okay, I have explained to the project at a high level and also some extent the detail level also you know explained to you. And the detail level is something like these are the rules to pre-process the data. What are the business logic used? So we have something called the customers file. The state and country column uh, values were stored in a single column. We need to separate these two things. Apart from this, uh, we need to compute, uh, create new column, the gross margin, gross margin percent, discount, net margin. Look here, I've given the formula here. Gro compute gross margin, total revenue minus co uh, cost of goods sold. To implement this, use the below columns from this data set. So gross margin is minus uh, this one. This one will be gross margin. You see the one will give you the percentage in gross margin, gross margin percentage, and discount. How did we how did we give the discount? Okay, what is the business rule? This is a business rule we follow. If the order code is more than five, and again, uh, specific um, category, specific subcategory, we, we will offer the discount. It's not about uh, you know, it's not a generic thing. Order quantity is greater than five, and if the subcategory is something like, or the category is appliances and uh, the subcategory within that appliance category, only specific 
sub categories uh, you know you know they are eligible for uh, 0. 0. 0. 0.08 um, percentage of uh, discount and that to those uh, customers they buy more than five in this sub category of this category they are eligible for this one this is the discount okay you can also add additional thing because this data set have everything in it and the net margin how will you find out cost of goods sold plus discount and also what you need to bring. So for your fact table, you need to bring in the product name from your product table. You can use either lookup value function or you can use related function. So this is how you can array the net margin. All the formulas were given and cost of goods sold here order according to standard cost that we have used it. And the cross margin, all the formulas were given here. Okay, you just go through on it and then create the reports and they will ask you questions like how many reports that you created. Of all the reports, um, let's say if you say I have created close to 10 reports, how many of them were uh, very complex? Let's say you have created 12 reports, how many of them were very complex one? Very complex and um, complex and medium complex, low complex reports. You can say that, uh, you know, two reports were very high complex, the rest of them were uh, you know, kind of, um, mm, listen, you know, the complex one was uh, two and medium complex was, um, this, you know, six, okay, 10 and then low was two. Okay, you can tell that way. Or you can say four and four, four, four. So 12 reports uh, in the current project. Previously, I created uh, 10 reports in other projects, but in this project, we created 12 reports. Apart from this, the ETL jobs we created, loading the data from source to target, and uh, source to target, this target is my staging area. That's all, okay? You need to tell this way so that so that uh, they will think, you know, definitely your profile is very German. Okay, and then, then the next question is, okay, you are saying very complex. And why do you say very complex or complex? What made you to think uh, very complex or complex? Is that complex for you or is that complex by its uh, nature? By its nature because the business logic were very complex and uh, in each report see these two reports right in each report we have close to uh, eight to ten pages were there so in one report eight, eight pages and again other eight pages can you tell me what are the pages can you what are the pages that you remember it so we have something called summary executive summary page in a single in a, for example in one report we have executive summary and then next one is like um uh, we have something like uh, the uh, top uh, five products by sales, uh, by uh, by uh, profit and quantity, and we have another one is uh, country by sales uh, performance. Okay, and, and and then we have other one is like um, uh, subcategory wise the detailed records. Okay, so so that what so we create the detailed page in the executive summary page we have enabled the drill through. So when they uh, you know, when they click on the drill through the view which uh, for the visual which we enable drill through when they right click on it it'll take them directly here so that they can get the detailed view about uh, each summary visual each summary report okay and then they will get into directly they'll get into uh, the technical part so they will understand okay very good and she was able to tell all the metrics and uh, KPs at least you remember. Uh, minimum seven KPIs with the uh, formulas. Everything is available here. If you remember, this is enough to crack the interview. Seven KPIs, if you tell them, fat, fat, fat. And, uh, you know, if you answer it everything well, then uh, obviously they will give uh, the salary on par with the industry standard. They will think that you are an asset. Okay, this is what uh, this one and uh, mobile dashboard, everything is all very simple one, it's all available there. And when it comes to the dashboard design, uh, okay, and dashboard. So what is a dashboard? What is the difference between report and dashboard? Already we discussed, what is the difference between these two? Can someone tell me? A single report can have multiple uh, pages in it, whereas a dashboard is a single page. Dashboard is a single page. It captures all the important KPEs and the uh, important uh, visuals. Okay, so this, this one will give you the gist of 
the entire uh, you know organization sell problem for example in the case of executive dashboard we have uh, used the metrics like profit margin average order quantity year on year percentage change in total profit and top five products by total profit total quantity and um, total revenue they will be happy okay good all the important metrics and reports only we displayed in dashboard if they want to take a deep dive they can go and look at the respective report and then they can view it so for the dashboard uh, when it comes to dashboard so how do you how did you go have go about creating dashboard for the dashboard uh, in our case we have used the visuals from more than one report report 1 uh, report 2 and report 3 for a single dashboard we took the uh, you know input from the you know the, the two to three reports so what are those reports finance report you have something on finance uh, uh, the cash on hand cash on hand expense these are also the metrics and because the executive management wants to see across the department uh, they want to have the metrics displayed the important metrics displayed here okay and then uh, the the inventory also fiscal year to date waste fiscal um, year to date production hours they want to see it so this report carries inventory related metrics and this one carries finance related thing the other one was uh, related to the marketing right so which um, uh, uh, which sales person are they you know doing good right so which sales person or which um, uh, sales uh, which district are we really performing well right what is the sales versus uh, target actual versus target and right? region wise they want to see that okay in, in that case we use a gauge chart okay gauge chart and uh, line charts to see the trend are we going in the right direction or is that can we see any upward trend or any downward trend okay so you can tell them in the dashboard you know what kind of visuals that you used it and what type of visuals and what are the metrics that you use it so more than one report so these three reports are available as you know let's say workspace called dev underscore sandbox this is the workspace workspace is nothing but the folder in this folder we have three reports are there in each re report we take at least you no know, two to on an average two to visuals and then we copy paste the dashboard once you copy paste the visuals for um, report one report two report three into your dashboard those are called as tiles the visuals are nothing but ties in the case of dashboard. Supposing I have another scenario, I have dev sandbox and uh, I have uh, another one is uh, dev sandbox uh, two. Here I have the report three is available instead of uh, available in workspace, dev sandbox it is available. So can I pick up the visual from report one, report two and report three also to my dashboard? It is not possible, you cannot do it. For a dashboard, if you want to pick up the visuals or copy paste the visuals from existing reports, all the existing reports should be available in, your, in the same workspace. It should not scattered across the workspace. These are the things, if you remember, that is more than sufficient. The next one is we have something called subscription option available. With that, uh, in cloud series, we can schedule the report also. We can schedule not only the data refresh, but also we can schedule the report. For example, I have designed a report. This report should get refreshed in so and so time. So after that, um, I want this report to be sent automatically to uh, specific email IDs. That is possible with subscription. I just go here and uh, we will go to the Power BI Cloud service. This is uh, one HR analytics dashboard. We have published it. <clears throat> and here we have multiple pages are there. Okay. And uh, if you hold the control key and click on it, it will take you directly there or you can click on it here. It will take you to the next page. So this is the one will give you the employee hiring trends and active employees by department. Let's say you are an HR manager. You want to see, you want to see the hiring trends. 
uh, across the years. Okay, and uh, you can have uh, the slicer for the year also. You want to see only a specific uh, years, right? So two years, recent two years, or these are three years. You can go and select those many number of years. This one will get refreshed automatically. Okay, this is the one uh, is your um, report. And if you in the single report itself, we can see different pages are the demographics, performance tracker, attrition, employee details. Likewise, uh, many pages are there. How many pages are including the overview? Three, six pages. And if you click on the overview, it will give you the buttons, everything, and hit count. Okay. And I will share you the data for this one also. This is another project. You can uh, let me see how well you are designing this uh, report. And then you come up with this, uh, you know, okay, we create various pages and let me see that one also. And the, yeah, the next one is uh, look here. We have something called subscribe, add new subscription. And here, what you do is this report, I want to send it to this guy. Okay. And then here I just say support at um, deep neuron dot in something like that. Okay. And these are the email ideas. And uh, we you can't use valid, invalid, duplicate uh, emails. Okay, I'll just remove this. Okay, okay, this is what that one. And the daily basis. Okay, for example, the VP sales and VP marketing and uh, CEO, if you want to send this report on a daily basis, automatically, you can select the frequencies. So daily means daily, hourly means every one, one hour, you send this report to management or weekly, monthly. These are the options are available. And then schedule time. You can specify what was the time you want it, and then more options are available. And you know, you can specify the subject, the covering letter, something like that. Okay, and then report page, which page you want to send it. I want to send only the overview page. Okay, start date and end date every day, uh, starting from 3rd March to uh, you know, whatever the date that you said, till the end of this month. Okay, permission drive the report in Power BI, link to report, and all the thing, preview image, everything. And now what you do is you just enable the run now, okay, on. That means the subscription, you enabled it. And then once you save it, what will happen is, you know, every day, 10, 15 p.m. or so, whatever the time that you specified there, this report will get triggered automatically. It will send an email. This report will be sent to the respective uh, people's uh, email ID. Whatever the email ID that used it there, for them, this report will be sent automatically. Okay, so this is this is the one. But uh, the when it comes to the dashboard, so this is not a dashboard; it's a report. So what I will do is I just uh, go to the workspace. Here I don't have much reports. Okay, I have two things are there, and I will click on new and then dashboard. Dashboard name. You can give something like executive dashboard created how can i log into power bi service you need to have did you not uh, signed up with this one if you have not yet signed up you can go and sign up here okay go to google and um, uh, right so type uh, or you can directly go here apdp.powerbi.com Go here and you can sign up, but this requires official email. You cannot use uh, Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail and all. You do, uh, I guess you have the official email. You can create it. And once you are done with this, you're all set. You'll be able to get in here. Okay. And uh, here, um, the dashboard. Okay. And edit uh, here, add a tile. Look here, edit, add a tile. Web content, image, video, uh, real-time data is also available. And I just say text box or image, um, select source. Or else uh, what I will do is I'll just go here and uh, here yeah executive dashboard i created it so what we can do is we open this report 
and this is the one right click on it and then i think some problem here upgrade it should the pin button so yeah this is the pin yeah it is there is nothing wrong here let's see you know currently i opened this report and uh you know the, in this report i have only one visual in real time you know, have multiple visuals right okay what i will do is i'll take that thing where is that uh, previously i saw the, the dashboard hr dashboard I don't know where I saw the HR dashboard dev sandbox. Uh, dev sandbox retail, I saw it, it seems. No. Okay, for example, this is my grocery sales. This is my report. In this report, I have only one visual. On top of each visual, you will find uh, something called pin visual. This is not available in your Power BI desktop. This is specific to Power BI Cloud Service. You click on this pin and then uh, when you click on it, pin to dashboard, existing dashboard or new dashboard. Already I have created a dashboard. You click on it here, execute a dashboard. You copy this one to this existing dashboard, pin it. Okay, create, you want to create a mobile layout or go to dashboard, go to dashboard. So look here, there itself, you can do it. Okay, and next one is again, you can go here, the workspaces and here you will find, for example, you have another uh report is available these two visual also i want to pin it to that uh, existing dashboard you can do it now we have and you can just you know at the corner of uh, this visual in where these are called tiles okay and i will pin this one also to my existing dashboard or if you select the new dashboard, you can specify the new bad dashboard name and you can pin it. So that one will become part of your new dashboard. Okay. This is my view. Look here, the same uh, two different reports. I just uh, copied in the sensor. I just pinned the visuals from two different reports into this dashboard. And if you want to resize it, just go to the, you know, keep the cursor at the corner and you can re resize it like this. But in the dashboard, you remember, you cannot use a slicer. Slicer visual will not work here. You cannot use a slicer. But you can publish the entire report itself. Let's say that in the report, I have a slicer. If I publish the entire report itself as a dashboard or a tile, I know entire report itself as a tile, then uh, the slicer will work there. But if you pin uh, the visuals from various reports, right, you cannot use uh, slicer and also you cannot include slicer um, as a separate visual as part of this. You cannot do it. That is no, that is one limitation with this one. Now you can save a copy, you can say execute, you can copy of this one, you can keep it. And if you want to refresh it, you can refresh these visuals. This is very simple one. And uh, for example, like I said, I just go to the workspaces and uh, Dave sales sandbox and I just go here. And uh, here I have, uh, I don't see anything good report. Okay, we have uh, something called uh, enterprise dashboard this is different from that one yeah so in this case what happened i have um, published this report entire report itself as this one okay this is my finance dashboard this is kind of an image okay and uh, here okay we will forget about this and let me just go here and see Likewise, you can open uh, various reports, but I want to show you this one. Uh, what is that from different workspace? Yes, I just take a demo of Ebert or something like that. Then nothing is there. Okay. Um,
yeah drill uh, dynamic role level security yeah in this one i have uh, some report but uh, here in this case uh, yeah, we have visuals if i keep the cursor over here on each visual you can see the pin here or let's say i want to uh, this one i want to pin this to my existing dashboard Look here, it is not showing that dashboard. Which dashboard? The executive dashboard, which I create in other workspace. So with this, we can control that from different workspace. Uh, if you have reports, and you cannot take that uh, in reports visual and pin it in your current workspaces dashboard. That is not possible. Look here, it is not listing out the existing one. Okay, it is not possible. But here you can, you know, create a new dashboard. So, for example, if you want to create a new dashboard, dashboards name something like uh, executive dashboard new. You can pin this visual. But whatever the reports that you have it as part of the dev to sandbox workspace, only you can pin it to this dashboard. Make sure that what are the visuals that you want to use it in your um, dashboard, all the reports in that are uh, that should be available in the same workspace otherwise it will not work it will not be displaying it you can across the workspace you cannot across the workspace reports you cannot take the visuals and pin it here once you create the, the you know dashboard nothing is great okay you, you can subscribe it like i have shown you right plan add new subscription you can save it and schedule it that's all so if you know this much, you know, uh, this is uh, enough. And uh, the next is asking now, okay. And um, next one is the design part. How do I design the reports? Okay. That one probably will take it up in the next one because that requires more time. And next, what we will do is in today's, uh, we have some more time. I'll just quickly jump into SSIS. Okay. And how do we? Uh, and the short function is funding. I will just show you that will not take much time. SSIS, how to work with SSIS? What is SSI? SSI stands for SQL Server Integration Service. How do I install that? You can uh, do Googling uh, to find out that. Anyhow, I'll show you how to do that. It's a pretty simple thing. So what you need to do is you need to go to this... Um, um uh, i don't okay not visual sorry the visual studio you need to download the visual studio so visual studio um there is a uh, place you know you can uh, you have something called um my dot visual studio dot com okay and if you go there you will find the software there and uh, okay, let me do one thing. Uh, my dot, I think uh, my dot uh, visual studio, yeah, my dot visual studio dot com. And then if you go here, and you have something called uh, the older downloads i don't remember that uh, that is where you will find all the things okay all the softwares there and you know you can see it uh, we will see here okay look here it is asking me the username and password sorry uh, what, this is going to azure no uh, i want to use uh, my dot visual studio dot com here older downloads you need a few more details okay support with your own lot in continue No, this path is not there. Okay, let me just simply go here. And then... Uh, 
confirm you click on confirm here and then if you see your downloads click on downloads you will find the various uh, release of visual studio visual studio for if you are using mac you can click on it and then visual studio 2012 and um and what else uh, yeah various versions are available okay and you can i remember the yeah so yeah vs i remember this is the one vs older downloads Mm, controller path my dot uh, we sorry visual studio dot microsoft dot com we'll try that way yes we got it we see you know right oops uh, visual studio dot Yeah, good. So what I will do is I will share this. You can keep it with you. You can save it in your system. Here you will find the when you click on the download or if you scroll down here, you can see 2019. No? Better you can use the 2019 world is gold. You can click on download. It is a very stable. Don't always try the very recent latest version. It will take, um, it will cause some problem. Okay. And here uh, you can find the latest version. Okay. Here what you do is um, in this page, um, let me do one thing. I'll open my Visual Studio, which I installed it. So to work with the exercise, you need to install Visual help here view help about can you see about here no right about microsoft visual studio and uh, what is this yes no 2019 <clears throat> something like that okay 16.9.2 version 16.9.2 you can go better you can 16.9.2 uh, or you can download the um 16.11 also Yeah, this is the one. Okay. You just uh, click on this. The exe file will get downloaded. Once the exe get downloaded, you just click on it. It's a very simple process. Uh, you can uh, you keep click on the next button. Don't change anything. The default installation folder, everything will get installed. Once it gets installed, the next step is um, you open the Visual Studio. Okay. Once you open the Visual Studio, what you need to do is you need to go and check the manage extensions. And here, if you search it, okay, here, if you search it, SSIS, right, you will find the SSIS package. You click on the SSIS package, a download will come. Look here, here you just type SSIS. In my case, already installed. Look here, SSIS in integration, see, it's already tick mark is there. For example, you wanted to, this one, I did not, um, You can also find the SSRS here. Okay, for example, I want to use this one. And the trial is available. You can download. When you click on the SSIS, in my case, it shows a tick mark. But first time when you do it, um, right, the download button will get in your. You click on the download, it will get download and it will take some time to install it. Here itself, you install it. Okay, you will find the, um, the progressive bar here itself. Okay. It takes some time. So once it gets installed, it will be part of your uh, thing. So what you need to do is uh, once you, right, once the installation was successful, you close it and open it. 
once you open it right uh, you will see something like this project repository and all for example i just created a new project mm, i just create say integration service projects and here i just say and create source to staging um, and then give whatever the name that you wanted and uh, hit the create button it will take some time to create the new project now the new project got created very good so now on the left side you can see the data flow task execute sql task and then uh, you know different categories You'll find, you know, under different categories, you will find different um, uh, tasks. So in the common, you will find executive package task, file system, FTP, all things, containers and other tasks, you will find it here. Uh, data mining, query task, CDC, uh, change data capture, analyze service, executive detail, a lot of things that you will, it's all very advanced one. So what we'll do is start with a simple one, what will data flow task? Start with the data flow task and you just, you know, drop it here. And then uh, you just right click on it, edit it. Now you are here. So what uh, we will do is, uh, we will start with one simple example here. I just want to use uh, the other sources and other destinations. Here what I do is, I will just say the in this place, uh, the data flow, yeah, here I go here, I will find uh, the flat file destination. Just want to see merge join. Okay, destination. And, uh, okay, here you need to do it here. And uh, bulk uh, file system task. And uh, what else we have it here? Mm. need to be here and here what you search here uh, what we will do is flat file yeah flat file source other sources flat file source and then other destination now what i do is i just remove this we have something or if you scroll down you'll find other sources excel source if you want to load the data from excel you can use it for the time being what i'll do is i'll just use the excel source and then the next one is uh, the other destinations like uh, SQL Server. Okay. The type of source, you can find it under other sources and the destination, you can find it here. And transformation, we want to merge the data or you want to split the data, that you can use it here. And common things like merge, join, sort, everything you can do it here. Here, you can do something like uh, splitting, uh, the data export, uh, the column, fuzzy grouping, uh, row sampling, all the things you can do. But the general common transfer, whatever you do it, you will find it under the common, including slowly changing dimensions also available. So now what I do is I just uh, click on this and then drop, uh, you know, uh, I will drag and drop this blue color arrow here. And before that, I right click on it, edit it here. I need to tell where my Excel file is there. You need to click on new here and then browse for example, in my case, I have something called expenses uh, dot expenses dot xlsx. Okay, and then I just say okay here. The name of the Excel sheet, um, no files loaded here. Not this one. Okay, one second here. New. I just do one thing here. I click on this. Instead of this, I will use uh, expenses.xls. Yeah, I mean, in this Excel file, what are the sheets that are available? You can see it here. For example, if I select year expenses, you can click on preview here. So you can see the columns. Okay, this is not the one I needed. I need the expenses one and then I'll see, yeah, the year, month expenses, these three columns are there. 
and uh, you can preview here itself okay within this excel sheet uh, how many subsheets are there? each subsheet you can see it which subsheet data that you need to you can view it here and you can choose it and hit ok here now the the cross red cross went off the next one is here you need to define the destination right click on it edit it and here you need to sorry you need to click on the new here and then here you will find the sales and then here you will find expenses and then preview here here nothing is there fine i just hit ok before you do ok here you need to click on mappings and you see here these uh, three source columns goes to my sql server three columns here year month sales but here the year column is in the smaller letter and um, okay and supposing you don't want uh, this column you can remove it and here the advanced one you can use these of various options first row last row you can restrict it okay and here i just you know already it is got mapped supposing you don't want this column should go here right click on it select this right delete selected mappings okay map items by matching and names so you know only when the the year appears here that one will get mapped this is the default one uh, select all mappings okay all mappings got selected if you want to delete all the mappings you know you can delete it also here this is what we needed and i just uh, hit ok now but here i am seeing you know here cannot be because the conversion type bt or is not supported there are some issues are there here right click on it and then you just DTR type, DTRA, DTRA is there, and then what the data viewer, year month expenses are there. Okay, now let me just check the other one which I used it. It is, it is not displaying the recent one. Okay, here uh, we will just see what is the issue here. All the data is there and this is everything is fine, but in spite of that, it is giving some error. I know, let me just uh, right click on it and then see edit. In the metadata, everything is fine. Data viewer, and then I click on OK here, right click on it, and then execute task. Year cannot because the conversion between types DT already DI4 is not meant month cannot be because the conversion type between. Okay, what I will do is I will just uh, you know remove this one, delete it, and uh, I will just use the same thing again. sales database and uh, let me check if I have the table available in sales database use no not here In the latest version, uh, okay, I think here it is not available. Uh, a new button will be there, okay, here. 
and uh, here it is there see this button one second let me just do one thing i think with this i can do it no input columns one second you need to first drop this here this is the input column right click on it edit and then here when you click on the new yeah good this is what i was talking about this and expenses expenses five so here itself we can create the new table okay so that the data type everything will be correct and uh, i just say okay and then look here that error went off right click on it here and execute task what is my source excel that is on my laptop and here um okay let me do one thing even after that, there was a problem so what is the file name expenses file i just uh, let us see the expenses file got created here or not yes it got created but uh, it was not having any data in it uh, right click on it and then execute task so one on one this is your oltp source and that is your staging data and design mode and you can go to the progress and check could not okay year output uh, company is subsequently used in the data flow task and uh, removing the removing this unused output column increase data flow task performance year month expenses on output uh, and company so this is not subsequently the data flow task okay 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 that is the problem data flow task uh, i'm using it here only right okay once you click on package execution completed and currently it is in debugging mode when you click on this it will go to your design mode and then okay what we will do is we, we just uh, one second one second the mapping needs to be done here uh, yeah manually need to do this one year year month okay and then advanced nothing is there okay so we need to click on okay still some error and you will bulk copy you need to run this as administrator is it interesting to fill yeah so everything is fine now but uh, thing is uh, the administrator you need to log in as an administrator we will just go to the control flow task and then here let me do one thing i will just uh, remove this one because of this error it shows error there i will just uh, you know edit administrator you need to run it as an administrator that is what it says and there is some confusion here because we get is a new one and if i go here okay fine advanced okay fine and here if i click on it here and then i just go and save it execute this task okay i i will will try the other option let me do one thing i'll just stop this debugging mode and here 
when you do this one here, edit. Okay, not here. And here, edit. Table or view. Okay, table name or uh, view name variable. Mm, this is correct only. We have something called bulk load option. Bulk load option is not working here. Show advanced editor. Uh, sales, runtime, connective, while DB, everything is correct. Column, mappings, year, year, month, and external input and output properties. Uh, destination, external columns, and input columns. It was working fine, you know, even I tested it uh, today often. It was working. I don't know why this causing some problem. I will check and come back, okay? And I put together three or four uh, ETL pipelines. It was working fine. Some, you know, basic issues, exception settings. So, but this is the idea here. Whatever the thing that you want to do it, you can, so you need to start something. Else. What I will do is I'll just create the new project quickly and explain you what I did. Just click on this one and then here you specify whatever the name that you want. So STT is something like that. I have given a simple one in the interest of time, simple name. And here the new project will get created. Once the new project gets created, uh, you will find the control flow. Here what you need to do is you need to select the data flow task first and then you need to drop it here. And then right click on it and edit it. So it will take you to the data flow automatically. In the data flow only you need to add other things. Like you know you have the other sources here what you need to do is so for example we'll take the uh, raw file source or xml okay flat file source we'll take this one here and edit i just go here and uh, select new file name you just go here and select um, Hmm, these big files will cause problem and uh, columns you can check the column names all the things everything is fine advanced to preview and hit ok and uh, if you click on preview also you can see the data here fine and I just click on ok here flat file source and what is the destination from whatever is there in my flat file I need to push it to my SQL server SQL server destination. And here, before you do that, you need to join these two tasks and then right click on it, edit. And here I just select the new, <clears throat> then sales database. And here I'm going to click on new. This one will generate the table so, script. So whatever the source table is, see, for example, if you have a table already available, empty table already you created in your SQL server, then you go and select the table here, where here. In this database, you have created already the sales underscore W04 table. The structure is there, but data is not there. <clears throat> In that case, you can go and select it. Okay. So what we are saying, if you select the, uh, the sales underscore W04 dot, uh, table, sorry, table here, this table is already available, but it has no data in it. Take the flat file data sales uh, CSV file data and load it to this table. But since I don't have the table available here, you can generate the table script here itself. For example, I just say sales underscore for other batches I have given this one and so already file will be there. So I give sales w 4 okay. I just click on okay. So this new table which I create, that one will become part of the database. That one will be available there. It, it got created now. And then we'll go to mappings and then we'll see everything, all the columns are mapped. So this is my CSV file columns. This is my SQL server table columns. All these things, you know, we have linked with one on one thing. And then look here, no error. Fine. Now we will try with this. At least let's see if this works. But uh, this has a lot of columns, other data types issues will be there. Let's see if works well, it's good. No, even in this case, it is causing problem. The same thing. I will check it out. Okay, what is the problem? 
One second, uh, I just see that here, uh, bulk, uh, unable to bulk copy data. You may need to run. One second, let me just see. This is something uh, news to me. So I don't know. Yeah, administrator. You need to run it as an administrator. And uh, so what you do is you just go to the run button, right click on it. Sorry, you need to type uh, the Visual Basic, the Visual Studio, Visual Studio. And you see it here, right? Right click on it here, run as administrator. You need to open it that way, then it will not cause any issues. Okay, run as an administrator and open that one and then you try to run it here. This is asking for service pack and all. <laughs> Let me do one thing. You can find the recent there. When you open this project, right, there is so you can find the recent one. Not here. I think I saved it there, S2T. That's why. Fifty percent is complete. Data conversion failed. Okay, there is some data type issue. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it should work now. We will try with uh, the other one. What I will do is I will create uh, another project. So there are some data type issues. Let me do one thing. I will just um. I mean, in the afternoon, I tried. This is something uh, crazy thing. Okay, what I will do is I will just you need to start with data flow task. Uh, right click on it, edit. Here, uh, you need to put this one, other source. Like, uh, for example, I'll use the Excel source here again. Let's see what happens. And uh, the next in the other one is the SQL or destination. Quickly, you'll see this is this one attempt. If this is not working, I will just come back to you later.
but here xls is working xls x is not working the older version of this one is working and uh, here it shows the version also fine and uh, Yeah, it went fine now. No issues. Okay, use expenses five five right? Uh, what is the file name? Expenses five five. Yes. No, it did not load. Did we get any error here? Progress. Year month. Um, Excel source output. No, not subsequently used. Okay, okay, okay. Subsequently used in the sense when you get this message, you are you need to. Uh, do one thing here you need to edit it here the mappings you need to go to the mappings and then you need to click on ok here and then what you need to do is you need to you know disable this get into the design mode and then into execute the task now it's success look here tick mark should come that means you know you are success got it so from the Excel file, it loaded the data because that uh, CSV file has some issues. That's the reason why it was not doing it. So make sure that you are opening the Visual Studio administrator mode. I've shown you how to open it. And the next one is you go to the data flow. Okay, irrespective of the type of the file that you use it, you select data flow. And, and then you need to drop it here in the control flow. Right click on it and go to the data flow here. And here what you need is whatever the source that you want to use it. For example, in this case, I want to use the Excel source. And then my target was SQL Server Destination. Go to the destination, select this one. And here, first what you do is you need to click on, right click on the edit and select the Excel file. And then in that Excel file, which sheet that you want to use it, make sure that you're using the correct word and then click OK. And then the next one is you need to make sure that you are dragging and dropping this blue colored one here. And then you select this one, right click on it, edit. And then you need to specify the database name here or the file name. It's what I did, I just clicked on new. It will generate the create table script similar to my source table structure, source file structure, Excel file structure. Here you can give whatever name that you want. Or if you if the table similar to expenses is already available in your SQL server, then you don't have to click on new here. You click on here and select. Uh, look here, the expenses is there. You can select it here. Let me see if I load it one more time. What is happening? Okay, design mode and click on OK. That's it. And then now we are in debug mode and go to here and then execute task. That's all. You can you should be able to see double tick mark here. See, it loaded the same record again here. Right, so it loaded successfully. This is one to one. Most of the time, one to one from the source system and the staging area. Uh, you, for example, you have the customer table in the source system. You also in that case, what when your source is also table. What you need to do is OLAB DB source. You need to use OLAB DB source. Uh, you need to define your source system SQL Server database name. Select it, and then table name you need to select it, and then here the SQL Server destination drag and drop it an important point what you need to note it down here is you need to um sorry edit this one and you need to map you need to go to mappings it, though it does the mapping automatically still you need to go and click on the mappings and then click on okay so we got some error right so because of mapping issue and all right so you need to manually map it okay even though it creates the link between the uh, source to target tables with the corresponding columns Still, we need to go and explicitly select it and then you need to, uh, you know, uh, click OK. And then in the empty space, you click on here and execute it, it will run. Okay. 
lot of features are there you can uh, do scheduling also email task is there you can send an email if the event fails uh, send an email for example dimension table data was not loaded it got failed it trigger an email okay email task is available a lot of features are available and uh, tomorrow i will show you not tomorrow this sunday what will is we will wrap up everything okay all the including the designing the report the dashboard everything will will wrap up but for you to clear the interview you can tell them so we have the control flow data flow what we do is i have a you know limited knowledge on ssis i never worked in depth so to staging we have it's all one to one not much but we did a little bit data transformation so what are the data transformations you did it here they will ask you can tell them merge merging the tables okay you have something called uh, common thing here you can you know expand it here and you can merge the tables okay let's say i have two tables are there i merge those two tables or i use the merge join i join fact table and dimensional joined it and then i loaded the output in another table and we have something else called um, conditional split you can say conditional split also for example we wanted to store the all the north region and south region data separately for this we have used the conditional split what you can do is in this case you right click on it and um, okay what i will do is on the safer side i'll just package as conditional split here you just remove this link um delete it and then in bit you can you can put the conditional split also okay and here what you do is uh, click on this drop so from this data set you bring it here right click on it edit and here you will find the columns expand it here and what you do is here you can put a month or year okay here you can put it here and then here uh, you need to know the data here no so what is the what was the year data is there in that case um supposing you have some categorical column then you can use it the year month and all not much helpful yeah 2020 2021 22 20, so what to do here is equal to 2020 and then you press enter and uh, the same column uh, year equal to year equal to you drag and drop it 20 it's a very easier one once you know the flow right you just play around it will work click on ok here Mm, you need to say case one and this one and uh, drop it here. You have created two cases. default output and then you need to define the target here okay and here There is some problem there okay the conditional split here i have mentioned the year equal to 2021 here conditional split output and here what i do is configure okay here 
See here, if you specify more than one condition, okay, you need to specify the two output. All the inputs on the total comes are connect outputs. Edit this component to find new. Okay, what you do is you can create another uh, SQL server destination. Um, in this case, you can select the case two. This is for 2021, this is for 2022. And here you just say the this one is for Ideally, I should have given that name there and it's okay. But uh, one more thing here, importantly, just go here, click on the mappings. You just simply click on mapping and then you do it. And similarly, you do it here, the same thing here. You just um, and that's it. Right click on it, execute task. You can fail with the error code. There may be error message before this pipeline. Okay, what we will do is we'll just go and check it. Uh, where is the problem? Yeah, this one I will check and come back because already 11 o'clock, I, even I have some office meetings. Uh, we will see it in the uh, upcoming Sunday. So this is a simple one. Okay, I'll just show you this one. Very easy to understand, right? The only thing is you need to go and download. What I will do is I will share my previous batch, uh, the installation video how to download and install the Visual Studio and the SSIS also. And um, this one, I will share it, okay? And um, I have another video.